are the catalysts of change. Without us, there is no change. Imagine walking into a grocery store, which is steps away from your home, on a chilly January morning to pick up some freshly harvested lettuce, some juicy strawberries, some fragrant basil, and some ripe red tomatoes, all of which were harvested hours before you stepped in in your local farm. How does that sound? But sadly, we are not there today. Our food system today is under stress. Food is a basic necessity and a, a birthright for every living soul on this universe. At the same time, food today is a privilege, but it shouldn't be. United Nations put a mandate in 2012 to end world hunger and achieve food security by the year 2030 with sustainable way of growing food using our agriculture. We are not there yet today. Around the world, 3.1 billion people as of last year were severely food insecure, couldn't afford a healthy diet. And among those, 830 million people were severely hungry. Till 2030, still there will be 670 million people going to bed hungry. What about the United States? Americans, 13.5 million of us, which is 10% of our population, are food insecure today. Can't afford an healthy diet. Let's talk about New York. 8% of us, 1.5 million people, as of 2021, were staying hungry, severely hungry. And by the way, Americans also waste 30 to 40% of our produce every year, which is highest among the, any country in the world. Let me talk about what food insecurity is. Food and Ag Agriculture Organization of, you know, of, of the world <coughs> categorize food insecurity from mild to severe. Mild food security is something which we might have experienced during pandemic when our grocery stores were shelves were empty and there was uncertainty of obtaining food. To severe food insecurity where we can go hungry for a day or more. Food insecurity is also getting worse with our rising population. 2050 projections says will be increased by 35% of our present day population. That's about 10 billion more people as of today, till 2050 on this earth. How are we gonna feed them? We have to increase or double our crops or food production as of today. That's 100% increase. And all that with just 5% increase in our total agriculture land. That seems impossible as of today. Let me tell you what our present situation of our agriculture sector is. Agriculture today uses 69% of our fresh water. Also, traditional way of agriculture is causing pollution of our soil, air, marine life, and land. Pesticides and chemicals and fertilizers we add into our soil, they remain on in our environment for generations, also end up in our food systems, which is causing our health issues these days. Agriculture is number one cause of global warming, emitting more greenhouse gases than all the trucks, cars, and trains and planes combined. Climate change is causing wildfires and droughts and floods even more severe and frequent. And finally, number one causes of deforestation, which is clearing out our forest, is agriculture today, because we want to clear our Amazon forest for producing more and more food. That's, by the way, the 5% I was talking before.
humans today need a reliable source and a sustainable source of food production that will not only feed today's, but also our tomorrow's population. But there is a good news. Let me introduce you to what vertical farming is. Simply, growing food inside in an indoor controlled environment using water, nutrients, lights, and, and temperature specific to what plant needs. Indoor in vertical stacks is something which we call vertical farming today. Vertical farming has a capacity to produce 100 times more yield by using 99% less land and by using 95% less water with no chemicals and pesticides. And all that closer to our cities. You might have heard that some of our vertical farms, you can, you can walk around New York, you can see the building outside, but inside the food is growing in. And you can buy those food in um, the clamshells or in the grocery stores, the lettuces and other things. Those are grown without any pesticides and with using minimum resources from our, from our nature. Can vertical farming be one of our solutions for our future food issues? I believe that vertical farming has a capacity to, to attain the food sustainability and also feed our future populations. It, has, it, it, has, it can be a vital factor in economic, human, and environment health. As these vertical farms are located close to the consumer where they, where they are consumed, it can solve our supply chain issues today. So we do not have to import our, our food from other countries or even in that matter from miles and miles away. Climate change today is also bringing far more difficulties in our supply chain issues where United States, for example, is on brink of tomato extension because 90% of our domestic tomato production comes from California, which is a drought prone state and it's miles and miles away. Let me give you another example. Sriracha sauce, which you, most of you like, High Fun Foods, they announced in April that they're gonna pause the production of sriracha sauce because weather changes has severely deteriorated the quality of chili peppers they use to make the sauce. Now these two examples are just the tip of iceberg. If, if our trend continues, we'll see the similar situations for our staple foods like corn and wheat and potatoes. Vertical farms has the capacity to, to address our food insecurity and food waste as well. Since we produce close to our um, consumers, it uses less food miles and also saves a lot of fossil fuels used in the transportation. Together using no pesticides, so no pesticide for our food and no pesticide for our environment. Human health is also a really important aspect since most of these food grown in vertical farms are food safe environment. Today, 45% of our United States nutrition is lost while in transit. The pathogens or, or the bacteria or the other contamination which happens when food is either in transit or in grown in a natural way causes human health. You might have heard that lattices are being recalled because of E. coli contamination. That's another benefit of uh, vertical farming. And it can also has a capacity to feed our growing population which is more and more towards our big cities and um, urban areas. 90% of our US population till 2050 will be either in big cities or in close to our big cities, which is 68% of the whole world. Vertical farming can also sustain how we can save our environment from deforestation 
and other unnatural activities of agriculture. Let me give you a classic example of lettuce. 90% of our lettuce today comes from either Arizona or California. Again, because of shortages and the water scarcity, we are finding it difficult to attain the supply chain. If we grow that same lettuce in a vertical farm, it will use only one liter of water for one kilogram, as compared to 20 liters for a greenhouse and about 250 liters for the same one kilogram of lettuce produced outside in the field. And since vertical farms use its minimum footprint, they can also yield a, a several times higher yield than the same amount of land used in greenhouse and outer space. And finally, as I mentioned, as these farms are designed to be close to the big cities, they only spend 40, 40 food miles in comparison to 500 or even 1,000 and 2,000 miles from outdoor lettuce being transported. Ladies and gentlemen, we, we, we do not have any other choice today. Let me be clear that vertical farms are not here to replace our traditional agriculture. In fact, it is to complement and supplement our farmers and our traditional agriculture. So as we are here today, let's commit that we can take all the steps necessary to, to save our earth, to save this planet, and to leave a food secure future for our future generations to come. Thank you.